Morning everybody. So we're here at uh, De Boot, I think it might be pronounced. I'll show you later on in Holland. We're just inside the Dutch border. It's early in the morning. Um, I'm going to get sorted out and going as soon as we can. I'm going to serve this Wilby this morning. I didn't do it last night because I was pretty knack when I got here. So this is it. Final push to Aymuden. So join us and hopefully we will make it a lot quicker than we averaged yesterday. So we are 260 kilometers from Imuden. Um, the campsite last night, uh, these people watch TV until I don't know what hour, at whatever volume they had it. And the family over there um, got horribly drunk. And uh, the woman, well, I think there's two families actually. And one of the women definitely sounded like a hyena caught in an electric fence every time she laughed. Um, <laughs> And they went on till about 4 or 5 a.m. So they've got no sympathy of me this morning. Um, and their kids are very interested in seeing what I'm doing. But I keep telling them to pee off so I can do my videos and stuff. So that's it. So I'm going to give Wilbur his final service before we get home. Just check the oils and things like that. You're still going to keep doing it every day. Uh, 260 kilometres today. Uh, the ferry leaves at half five. So I need to be there at half three. And it's 260 k's, uh, which at yesterday's rate will take me five hours to do. So I'm definitely going to be on the road by 10 o'clock. Um, I can't get my breakfast from the canteen until 9 a.m. No porridge this morning. I ran out of porridge. So we will... I'll get over there, get all my service and stuff done. I've already dried the tent off. So we'll get packed up, um, ready for 9 o'clock. Go over there, get me brekkie, and we will get on the road. Um, it rained overnight, which it was forecast to do, but it's forecast to be dry today. Last check, I'm just going to check the spark plug again. The fuel mileage yesterday was somewhere near. It was uh, nearly just under 21 kilometers a litre so I know it's pretty close so I richened it up another flat yep brown just on the tip so I reckon finally I've got the mixture sorted after what whatever went on in um, in Lillehammer anyway or before Lillehammer I, I fixed it in Lillehammer anyway that looks okay now I'm gonna leave it there and we should be good. This is a campsite to remember because it's close to the A7 just inside the Dutch border and I think the reception's open until about 8pm so that works really well. And here we are, here's the reception building. And a trampoline there if you... or oh, two trampolines. And there's the pond with the zip line and the obstacle course thing. I'm going to sit here, they're just making a coffee for me. Got me pastries sit here and have me brekkie in the sun and then we'll go back and get loaded up and a delicious brekkie it was too with a nice view over the pond there fingers crossed it stays dry for the day pastries and coffee perfect we also had a little visitor i think he wanted the breakfast too funny little fella yeah pretty snazzy rope though it might look like i'm doing nothing but i am in fact doing something and because of the idiot buffoons we've got in government in the UK I've got to sit here on my phone and fill in some Covid survey thing before I'm allowed back into the country and then they're going to come round my house and check that I'm in quarantine or something well I've got to do it they say it's a legal requirement and they talk about fines and all that crap yep I'm just going to point out that Boris has had Covid but I haven't so who's the idiot it's not me Anyway, there we are. That's the way it is. You may be fined up to £100 if you refuse to provide your contact details or more if you break the rules. So there we are. I've just got to do it. Well, it took about 20 minutes in total. What a total waste of time. You can see how long I was there by how far the sun moved while I was sat there on my phone doing this. How ridiculous. 
Anyway, it's got to be done. I did that and it was time to get the tent packed up so we can get loaded up and we can get out of here. It's looking like a nice day, just fingers crossed it stays like this. I've just about got the hang of packing now, after three weeks. Anyway, that's the last time I need to do that for a while. Well that's it, we're packed, we're done, it's about half past ten, so that's okay, we can wander off. I knew it was going to be a bit of a chill out morning. Um, it's nice and warm, sunny. Wilbur's packed, we've left the campsite as we found it, as usual, you know, no rubbish or anything else, we've cleared up. So, let's go, we'll see how we get on, I'll ride for a couple of hours and then see how close we are and what we're going to do for lunch today. So it's been a very nice campsite, I would have liked to have spent a bit longer here really. We got nice trees and the green and everything else, yeah a very pleasant place. Well worth a visit if you're heading past this way. De Burt Camping, highly recommended. But anyway, we're not here to look at campsites, we're here to get on the road and get ourselves over to the Ferry Day Moon. So we'll jump onto the highway and hopefully things are going to be quiet today, I hope so. And we've got blue skies. So fingers crossed we'll get a good day's riding and get that 260 kilometres done soon enough. It looks like I'm heading straight into that rain so before I get wet I'm going to put my wet trousers on. I think that would be a smart move. Well, we did get a couple of showers later on, so I was glad I stopped, but it probably wouldn't have made too much difference. But anyway, it's no fun riding if you've got wet riding jeans, so I thought it was worth the time just to do this. you can hear me it's very windy and a bit noisy uh, but we're making really good time we're about 70 kilometers to go so we've done however many that is I can't remember now anyway we are yes yeah, so we've done about 200 so it's time for lunch so we've got hot coffee cappuccino we've got a hot sausage roll we've got some Pringles we've got some honey waffles I'm enjoying the roads, um, there's a very very strong 45 degree wind um, to the head and the side which makes it very interesting uh, going between the big trees and the dikes because all poor old wind gets blown around a bit. Uh, but anyway, we're good. Cheers. Let's go to the ferry. it's a pretty quiet run the roads are clear that bit of rain that we had as a shower is cleared out as well so we can just relax keep our distance and bumble along at 90 kilometers an hour it doesn't take as long to get the outskirts of the ferry port As soon as I've passed one window and I've got to navigate 10 yards to the next window. I don't know why they're going to do all this.
and then the security guards turn up and I think oh I'm in trouble here they're paying too much attention yes. they're gonna pull me in and go through all my stuff on Wilbur anyway as it turned out while I'm doing all my passport and stuff with the lady in the cupboard they just had never seen a square four before and they'd heard the bike and didn't recognize it so they came to check out Wilbur Square four. You've seen one before? No, never. They're quite rare. Aerial? Aerial is that? Which makes cars now? The same company or? The luxury cars. Yes. Aerial Atom? Yeah. yeah. Same? Okay. That's right, yeah. Which year is this, sir? Uh, 1951. 1951. So I've just ridden it to the Arctic Circle and back. Really? Isolation holiday. <laughs> With my tent and my bike and me. That's it. Quite a journey. Yeah, 6,000 kilometers. How long? Is it, it kickstart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take you? Three weeks. Oh. Yeah. Less than I thought. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And did you have any no trouble at all? Yeah, yeah some Six small problems, of oh. course. Problems. But um, it's easy to fix. Well, that turned out to be easier than I expected so that's good we can wander our way down here and onto the ferry it's going to be pretty quiet I expect so this is it our last ferry journey of Wilbur's Arctic Adventure ferry number 20 of this trip I never thought we'd be on 20 ferries on this journey That's it, we're done, we're on the boat to Newcastle. As you can see, it is very, very empty. There's there's one other motorcycle there, or a scooter thing. And that's it, and poor old Wilbur here on his own. I've just been speaking with the two um, the two border security blokes that come up with the, you know, the guns and stuff, and they're looking and they said, what's that? I heard it, I've never heard anything like it. So I was stood talking with them for 10 minutes at the, um, at the, the border check office, so they, they were very amused by Wilbur. And they were like, oh, start it up, we want to hear him, give it a rev. <laughs> Tell us about it, what's the engine and all sorts of stuff. So that was, that was good to see. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I just spoke with a lady there. She said there's 150 people booked on in total um, on the whole boat. And I think this boat holds like two and a half thousand people or something crazy. Um, you know, it's good for distancing and stuff, but she said business is... Um, taking another real hit with the quarantining of Holland. Um, well, we're going to get, get the stuff, drop it in the room and go and have a look around the boat. Um, but as I say, I think there's, that's all there is. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven cars and two motorbikes. Um, I guess the rest will probably be freight. Right, let's go to the room. Well, this is the DFDS cabin. It's not really a patch on the colour line one, that's for sure. And then we've got the toilet room and shower in there. Yes, they're selling face masks in the shop. I thought they would have been giving these to passengers as they got on the boat, actually, as a point for social distancing, considering if you're buying them at 10,000 at a time or whatever DFDS would there, 10 pence or something. But you can buy them in the shop, £6.90 for a face mask. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. They're not exactly supporting this COVID thing, are they? And it seems that the cafe has a plain croissant, a chocolate croissant or some chocolate cake and that is the only thing they're offering and all the other cafes are closed. Pretty much the whole boat is closed. The only two things that are open are that coffee lounge with a very restricted menu and the navigator bar which doesn't do food and the buffet which is 30 quid which is just crazy prices for um, for what it is. Well that's it, we're on board. There's, I've seen four of the passengers, five passengers, that's been it. So, got myself a coffee, got myself a slice of chocolate cake, Wilbur's tucked up in bed for the night, and that's it. 
I could very easily just ride back off the boat and do another 10,000 kilometres and to be honest I don't really want to go home. Um, I would much rather just carry on being with Wilbur and probably head further south where the weather's a bit warmer um, and wander our way around Europe and such like but anyway I can't, um, work beckons, um, I would much rather be doing this but that's the way it is, um, they're just my thoughts of the moment. Um, yeah. Um, it's Saturday now, so I'm back at work Monday morning. Um, yes, the last three weeks have been excellent and doing it with Wilbur and such like has been great. And I could quite happily just, as I say, uh, I don't feel like I'm tired or bored of doing it. Um, I would like to do more. Well, I've come out on deck just to have a look around, stretch our legs. We've still got another two hours before we sail. Um, they led us straight on the boat, which was great. Um, I was surprised. I thought the queue was up, but that's okay. It's obviously not taking them long to turn the boat round because there's nobody going in either direction. Um, the quarantine has, um, has killed this uh, travel route, it appears. Um, anyway, we've got a lovely view of Imuden Harbour. Um, we have the imaginatively named Paragon B391 behind me there. Um, it looks very expensive and I think it sucks oil out of the sea, but I'm not sure. Um, we have a light on a stick and we've got some ships over there. Um, there's not much else to say. We're on our way. I think um, the ultimate self-isolation holiday with Wilbur. That's been a pretty good success. That's something to remember for the rest of my life. We're on the way. So that's it. It's kind of over. But all we're going to do now is sort Wilbur out and plan the next one. That's it, it's about bedtime, so back in the cabin, I just had a couple of beers up in the bar, the guys there playing acoustic guitar, the poor guy he was playing to about four people at the beginning but I guess people had gone down for the buffet food and stuff and they got a bit busier later on, a bit busier like 30 people maybe, so that was okay, uh, but had enough of listening to people on video calls. Why do people do that? You're in a public place, in a bar or something, and I have people on both sides of me on video calls with their phones on the um, open microphone, whatever that's called, I don't know, um, deciding to have the conversations with the world. So I know all about the guy behind me and his bald tires and the rust that the border guards picked up on on his car and the people on the other side and their friends got diabetes so I know all about that now uh, not that I wanted to so I thought right I've had enough of that I'm going to come back to the room and just uh, chill out for a few minutes and then I'll be off to bed so join us next time when we see the breakwater of Newcastle come into view I get to untie Wilbur for the last time on the ferry trip this time I think he's glad to be free Wilbur sets his tyres back onto UK soil for the first time in 24 days. We take a slightly damp and grey ride back home. We arrive back in our favourite village anywhere, which is Ingleton. And Wilbur goes into the workshop for maintenance and the next adventure. Yeah.